Has anybody made a video folding this many blades? Did I just make YouTube history? Yay, YouTube. It's just folding a blade. There's no reason to get excited about it. Just part of the job. Welcome to Hobby Hardwood Alabama Sawmill, a mom and pop operation that produces some of the highest grade lumber in the country. Hey folks, welcome to today's episode of Sawing with Robert Milton at Hobby Hardwood. <laughs> I can't help it, I feel like a game show host every time I start doing one of these videos. It's cold out here and uh, it's a good day to do a little bit of mill pickup. And one of the things that I always like to do is police up my bandsaw blades. So today I'm going to show you how I fold them, which is very important so you don't get permanent physical scars. Um, think of them as a rubber band with sharp teeth. So there are some good techniques on how to fold them up without getting bled too much. There's a lot of videos on the tube of how to fold a band, so I'm not going to cover all the, cover everything everybody else has covered. Um, I always do things a little bit different, so I'm going to show you what works for me and over a period of years has caused me the least amount of injury. Uh, when you're working with bandsaw blades, first thing you do is put on a pair of gloves. Next thing you do is put on a pair of safety glasses. I've had safety glasses get knocked off my head by bandsaw blades before. Since I'm making this video, and my videos are always straight up, if I get cut, I will film it. If I bleed, you'll get to see it. Now, I'm not saying that uh, I'm doing anything unusual about uh, folding up blades. I was trained. I'm a, I am a graduate of the Woodmiser School. Uh-oh. And that wind blows the whole camera over. All right, let's try that again. What a piece of shit. Anyway, as I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted by Mother Nature, I learned how to fold up a band. And when I bought my first LT-15 at Woodmiser, noon in Georgia, they taught me how to do it. It's a great way to do it. There's a reason they teach you how to do it on a band with no teeth on it. And you can practice on an old radiator belt is imagine this is a saw blade it's not though it's a belt it's soft it doesn't have any teeth it's not going to cut you it's not going to bleed you so it's easy to do one of these the toy they teach you is you grab it like this horizontally you get a little flip as you flip it you're giving it a twist you want these two these two things right here to come together. You flip it, twist it, and when they come together, see how that works? Now all of a sudden you got like this, 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 you pick this up, you go, oh, that's cool. How hard is that? Same thing when you uncoil it, there's a trick to it. You kind of bounce it in your hand, you get it to where it's a figure eight, and find out where the figure eight is, and then Basically, let's see here. Nope, that isn't it. You reverse the process and it looks like that. Perfect. <laughs> now, <laughs> I would never do this with a real saw blade because it will kill you. That's how you do it with a real saw blade. Now, if you saw how fast that was, that's more like real life. So it'll bleed you that fast. So what I'm gonna do is show you the way I do it day in and day out. It's much safer than the flip because look, the flip just came and hit me. Well, it hit me right there. Yeah, I've seen people get hit right there with a saw blade. <laughs> it's always good for a laugh, uh, especially if they're wearing shorts. Whoops, that's the problem. All right, 
So anyway, I'm going to show you how I do it. Enough of this stupid stuff. I use a helper, piece of pole, um, anything. And the idea being that you don't use two hands and get some momentum and actually tension the spring with teeth on it. You walk up to something that grabs it, you push in and down, and you'll notice how more relaxed that is. You can actually go in slow motion. When you see people flipping blades, the faster you flip it, the better it's gonna curl, okay? You have to overcome the spring constant of the steel in the blade. Well, if you, if you, if you think about it, I'm moving fast on something that acts like a spring with 135 inches worth of teeth in it. Well, that's just a recipe waiting, a recipe for disaster. I prefer the slow technique. Go up here, fall asleep, grab the edge, give it a twist, and you're done. All right, so let's try it with a real blade this time. They're one and a half inch thick. They don't like to bend 55 thousandths of an inch. They're actually quite mean. Um, so when you're trying to flip these, you better be wearing gloves because you got two options. You can hold it down here at the base of the blade and not get your teeth in it, or you just go ahead and get your teeth in it. Your hands, the teeth in your gloves. Both of those are, I don't particularly care for it, but this is, this is how you do it. You hold it here. I like to put that right there. Hard flip. And you got it. Let's try it one more time. So you hold it out. Give it a hard flip. The blade comes in, hits me right on the shins. Good job. Luckily the teeth are in the other direction and I'm wearing long pants and you fold it up. Well, guess what? There's an easier way. It's called relax and do it slow. Get it next to a piece of wood, just like that blade. Hold it down here, walk in, give it a twist. Look how slow this is. Want me to do that again in slow motion? All right, let's do it in slow motion. Watch this. I'm coming from the side. Go in, press up. See how it kind of does it? Roll it over nice and easy. Put them together. Give them a little jiggle. That blade's coiled. I like using electrical tape. I know some people like to use wire. Bread ties, that's fine. You know, they use electrical tape to bind alligator mouths together. It's good enough for a saw blade. So I'm showing you how to coil them right now. The real key at the end of the video is I'm gonna show you how to break them, how to cut them. And I've seen people use grinders. I used to use a grinder. It's not really a good idea to throw showers of sparks right over a sawmill where there's three tons of sawdust. It's generally not a good idea. That's called kindling. I, I do resharpen a lot of my blades. I'm not attached to these though. They're just saw blades. I mean, seriously, how easy is that to do? Notice I have not been bled once. And I'm able to talk while I'm doing it. I have seen so many people get cut up. It's almost like a rite of passage when you're starting how to saw. It's getting cut up by a saw blade. It's like, hey, I'm bleeding. What'd you do? I was coiling up a saw blade. Well, that was a bad move. Broken one? Yeah, here is a broken one. Saw blades do break. These suck. There really is no good way to coil these up. I don't like messing with them much. You better be wearing gloves when you do these. This is where a lot of electrical tape helps. By the way, I get my electrical tape at the Harbor Freight. 
you can spend a lot of money on electrical tape, but you can also get the cheap stuff. The thing is too, it's amazing how these saw blades cut right through this tape. So this stuff, I kind of just do the old careful, roll it up a couple times and retape it. Now this one's going into the garbage can. I should say the recycled bin because if nothing else, I am an environmentally friendly sawmill. <sighs> this is fun. Now the reality is, I get a lot of my blades these days in flat packs. And uh, they're not as bad. But Woodmiser sends a lot of their stuff. Um, but a lot of companies send their blades in these uh, band in these conditions like this. So it's definitely something you want to know how to do. If you're at a party and you want to win some money and you want to hurt your friends and enemies, ask them to curl one of these things up while they're drunk. Uh, better have some bandages because they will bleed. Uh, I should probably say don't do that at a party because it's probably not a good idea, but it would be fun. What's fun about some of this stuff is that a lot of times you might even remember what happened to the band. I got one over there that's pretty badly messed up. Well, maybe one thing you will notice is even though my bands are badly worn, these have been sharpened a couple times, the metal is still slick. If you're seeing, I've got done a couple videos on this. If you're getting buildup on your bands from saw, sawdust, pitch, then you, you shouldn't be. So don't. Watch a couple of videos. Basically, if you're, these saw blades are worn out. Look at how clean they are. They're not rusty, they're not dirty, they don't have sap or pitch on them. This one's got a nice kink in it. I don't know what happened on that one. That was a good something. Looks like a metal hit. Teeth are messed up. And then sometimes I'll try to back it out. I'll bend it when I'm backing it out. Uh, these, once a band hits metal, it's pretty much ruined. I mean, you can reuse it for some stuff, but most of the time it's pretty much done. So hang it up and dispose of it. Off to the big band graveyard in the sky. Not bad, I'll try a different angle on it. Let's try it from here, that's where you can see my face. Push up, slide in, get it, done. little bit of Harbor Freight electrical tape. I'm not a big Harbor Freight fan, but you know, you can go to Lowe's and buy this electrical tape, dollar roll. I can go to the, go to the Harbor and buy it for like a dollar for five rolls. I'm sure if I was rewiring a house or something that mattered, I wouldn't be using it, but for something like this, it's like, whatever. It's just, I'm just using it to hold stuff together. One thing, a lot of folks, when they're doing that 
the snap it's down and twist method. Let me tell you what, you do that this many times, my wrist would be killing me right now. Now some people would wonder why I don't coil up the bands soon as I uh, take them off the mill. That's a valid question. I could give you a bunch of reasons. The real answer is I don't want to. When I'm sawing lumber, I'm sawing lumber. Thinking about sawing lumber, working on sawing lumber, and folding a band, these take a lot of space. They do take a little time. Of course, another reason I like to have my blades hanging up. So if I do hit a nail or a hunk of metal, and it happens, I mean, you try to minimize it, it happens. But uh, you don't go ahead and put a brand new blade on. As sure as you do that, you're gonna hit another nail. So you come up here to your pile of kind of dull blades and just use one of them. You should never run a blade so long that it won't cut. So when you take it off, you should always have a few more cuts left in it. So when you hit that magic nail or hunk of, wood, hunk of metal that's in your wood, when you just trash the blade, you don't go and just put a brand new high dollar blade on. You go to the rack and get one of your slightly used ones and then tear it up. Because if there's one nail, it's gonna be two or four. And uh, you get into one, you're gonna get into a whole school of them. I know some of you experienced sawmillers out there saying, I fold my, you know, why is he folding them like that? And you do your own thing, and that's cool. Uh, nice thing about it is it's just folding the blade. There's no reason to get excited about it. It's part of the job. Basically, the way I look at it is if you're having to do something that could be dangerous and could cause blood, then if you're having to think about it and you're worried about it biting you, then you should be doing it a different way. This has got a little rust on it. I was an engineer, I guess I still am technically. I'm not sure, I'll have to check. Maybe I'll check. In YouTube video history, <laughs> I didn't think about this. Has anybody made a video folding this many blades on one video? Did I just make YouTube history? Yay, YouTube. Right. All right. One last one just so y'all can see. Relax, go to sleep, lift it up, push it against the board, fold it up. Give a little jiggle, you're done. A little bit of tape. So, like I say, go ahead and make a coil. You ain't gotta be too tight. Get it lined up real nice. Go ahead and put some tape on that one. Even just a little bit. Because you talk about a mousetrap wanting to come back 
and cut your head off. A little bit of electrical tape just to kind of hold her where you want it. Roll it nice and easy. Notice the electrical tape is still stuck on there. Come back over here. A little more tape. A couple extra wraps on this one. And there's a few blades on a forklift. Now we're upstairs in the experimental band storage area. All these bands have been burned up and I've just been waiting for an opportunity to get rid of Now we have moved to the Hobby Hardwood band sharpening and setting facility, otherwise known as my garage. And I've got a stack of bands in here that have been sharpened and set two times, uh, maybe three, but certainly two. And it is time for them to go to the big band graveyard in the sky. I've had as much fun as I can folding bands as a man can have folding bands. I don't really know what the point of this video was other than to show you that folding bands is part of the job and it's not real hard and you just kind of got to get good at it because, uh, I don't know. I have nothing really clever to say except how do you know when the band is done? The fat lady sings. Since I ain't got no fat lady here, how about just the fat old guy signing off? See y'all, Hobby Hardwood, y'all have a good one. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos. 
thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.